Hello, my name is Susan Levenstein. I'm talking to you from Rome, and I'm going to tell you about some research that I performed with my colleagues in Denmark at the Research Center for Prevention and Health of the Capital Region. We aimed at settling the old question of whether stress is a cause of peptic ulcer. As you know, peptic ulcer was once considered to be the classic psychosomatic disease, but nowadays most experts consider ulcers to be caused either by Helicobacter pylori or by non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, and discount a role for psychological factors. But as many as one in three ulcers occur in people who have not been exposed to either H. pylori or NSAIDs, and most people who have H. pylori never develop an ulcer. So it is clear that there are cofactors and alternative pathways for developing ulcers, both of which could involve psychological stress. Many studies of societal stressors, from the blitz bombings of London during World War II to recent earthquakes in Japan, have suggested that stress can contribute to causing ulcers. And there are clinical studies showing that stress can make it harder for ulcers to heal and more likely that they'll recur. But this body of evidence is not airtight. In particular, the few prospective studies of stress and ulcer in defined epidemiological cohorts have been weakened by lack of data on other risk factors and by reliance on self-report in whole or in part for their ulcer diagnosis. It's not feasible to study this issue in recent cohorts because nowadays most people who have dyspepsia take powerful anti-secretory medications without ever doing definitive testing, which probably cures many ulcers without the diagnosis ever been made. We were able to examine the association between stress and ulcer prospectively while avoiding these limitations, using interview data and blood samples that had been collected in 1982-83 to 83 from a population-based sample of more than 3,000 Danish adults without a history of ulcer. We devised a 10-point stress scale from the interview data based on psychological vulnerability, use of tranquilizer medication, and a set of concrete life stressors such as unemployment. Participants were then re-interviewed over a course of 11 years and were asked about new ulcer diagnoses. Additional cases were detected by searching the Danish National Patient Register. And we then reviewed all of their radiological and endoscopic reports and only included cases where it was confirmed that an actual ulcer was documented. This was the case for 76 subjects. Among our subjects who had been in the lowest tertile of stress at baseline, 1.6% developed an ulcer. Among those in the highest tertile, 3.5%, meaning that high tertile stress more than doubled the risk. This association was not affected by adjusting for H. pylori antibody status. It was slightly lower after we adjusted for socioeconomic status, and it was considerably lower, but still statistically significant, after we adjusted for a set of potential behavioral mediators, smoking, NSAIDs, and lack of exercise. Somewhat to our surprise, stress was just as associated with ulcer among patients who had H. pylori infection as among patients who had neither H. pylori nor exposure to NSAIDs. When we performed multivariable analysis, Stress, smoking, H. pylori, socioeconomic status, and the use of NSAIDs were all independent predictors of ulcer. To summarize, in a prospective cohort study in Denmark, psychological stress at baseline increased the incidence of peptic ulcer over 11 years, partly through an influence on health risk behaviors. Stress had just as much effect on ulcers associated with H. pylori infection as it did on ulcers in people who had not been exposed to either of the major risk factors for ulcer. We conclude that H. pylori and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs should not be considered the causes of peptic ulcer, but as ulcer risk factors alongside stress and smoking. And we conclude, finally, that clinicians treating ulcers should be alert to their patients' life circumstances and their psychological states. Thank you very much for listening.